Oh, you try. <laughs> Two, one. Hello, everybody. My name's Jane Kelly, and I come from Cumbria. Um, Kent Social Services took my grandchildren via a secret family court. Um, the mother was part of the police and she knew the perpetrators that um, instigated the removal of my grandchildren. They all worked together with their lies and their deceit to take my grandchildren. We'd just come back off a lovely um, holiday and my son had told me that he, had been he was being abused and the children were being abused. And I told him naively because I didn't know at the time that the police were so corrupt and social services were so corrupt that um, he could go to the police and tell the police and that was the worst possible advice I could give him. She was ready and prepared for that day when he went forward with the abuse that he was suffering. I found out later that they were all in the same satanic group, police officers, social worker, the social worker was running a paedophile ring for 25 years I, I investigated that man shall I just shout? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it would be easier oh, okay. it's okay. turn that one off a second two, one, two, two, one, two, two. it's that so if you want to come closer to listen to how corrupt social services is, I've got some very important information that I have researched about social services and the privatisation of adoption agencies. Um, I started with the social worker that... Is that too shouting for that? No, it's fine. I started my investigation work with a social worker that took my grandchildren in back in 2018. I found out that he was running a trust in the 90s uh, called Hartstein Trust and he was um, taking boys even from Africa and trafficking them to elite paedophile rings in London and that is the reason I believe that they uh, wouldn't, uh, they covered up our case. Um, he was struck off for something he did in Swindon in um, um, 2016. He, was, he, was, he didn't get struck off, he got sacked from Swindon County Council, sacked, and he moved to Kent County Council because they wanted him, because he had connections, obviously. And um, then he, was, uh, he, got, he got sacked from Kent after he took my grandchildren, and then there was a tribunal where he got um, struck off the register. But before he could get struck off, he took my grandchildren for a satanic group. Um, they told us that they'd taken the children to Italy. We don't know whether they were, where, whether they are in Italy or not. There's too many satanic paedophiles involved for me to believe that that was the only reason why they helped this woman who had joined the police so she could be part of them. Um, anyway, after that, I went on social media sites and I um, realised that I wasn't the only family we weren't the only family that were having our children uh, removed in secret family courts by lies and misconduct by all of the authorities involved. Um, we started, um, <coughs> I started looking into the reasons why the children were being taken. What were they doing with them? What was the agenda? I, I couldn't believe there were so many adopted parents out there that wanted so many children. It didn't add up, it didn't make sense. So I started looking right back at um, adoption and the government um, incentive for making adoption easier and quicker. And uh, I started researching the policy makers. The policy makers were into eugenics. They were into depopulation. They were into all of this that's going on right now. Um, it's all part of it. And they wanted these adoption agencies set up by 2020. I wonder why they wanted all these adoption agencies set up. Ours uh, 
called Coast to Coast Regional Adoption Agency was the last one to be set off. Um, the white paper from the government in 2018 after the financial crash was called Adoption, uh, vision, for, vision for Change and it was making adoption quicker and easier to remove children for adoption. Um, our adoption agency, I started reading the minutes of the adoption agency and I found out that our regional adoption agency had a senior governance officer called Sandip Mahajan. I found out that this gentleman, if I can call him that, he's a multi-billionaire, he has um, directorships in 36 global companies and um, uh, there is Balfour Beatty, which is one of the biggest conservative donors, uh, Pepco, Poundland, um, Steinhoff, which is uh, Wayfair. Wayfair Furniture is uh, Steinhoff. If you go on Wayfair, the majority of Steinhoff furniture is, uh, uh, Wayfair furniture is Steinhoff. And um, I thought, what on earth is this man doing as the senior governance officer for our adoption agency up in the north of England? It didn't make sense, so I went to my MP and he tried to make excuses. He tried to tell me that I must have got the wrong Sandip Mahajan, which wasn't the case. Um, Sandip is double EP and this man had changed his name to DIP and there was only two in the country and uh, obviously there was an agenda. This is the agenda of depopulation and uh, eugenics from the government and they are trafficking our children abroad. We met a social worker at a train station. My husband works in a train station in Cumbria and he started big mouthing what a clever man he was helping out social services failing social services so my ears pricked up when my husband came home and told me about this social worker who was blabbing to my husband and um so we set him up um he wanted um he wanted uh, temporary accommodation near seaside towns where well, one specific one is barrow in furnace he was looking for a static caravan, a static caravan to place children in with his social workers. He was trafficking our children. So I got his telephone number, I got his uh, name, and I looked him up on Social Work England and he was there. I rang Social Work England and I found out where he worked. He worked at Caritas Care Limited. And then I went, went on LinkedIn and I got the shock of my life where he was working. The shock of my life. He was working for Sidra Research Hospital in Qatar. He was stealing our children, selling them to a research hospital in Qatar. This research hospital was built by Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. It, it is genomics. They research genomics. They are taking our children for research in research hospitals. This is Hitler. This is a Hitler state. They are trafficking our children abroad for research. Then I started looking at other senior governance officers because I thought this can't be the only one. There must be other ones. I found one in Sheffield who is the head of the adoption and looked after hub in the NHS hospital here over here in Sheffield. She's the head of a hub. There's a, there is a doctor there, a Dr. Patrice Tom, who's Chinese American. You can find nothing out about her. Doctors, you can find a lot out online about doctors. The only, doc, the only thing I could find was access denied to a Chinese website, a government Chinese website. Now what is that doctor doing in a, in a hub and what is she doing as our senior governance, as one of the senior governance officers in an adoption agency? A doctor, uh, uh, Dr. Lorraine Pearson is the head and she is the senior governance officer with Patrice Tom underneath her in a, an adoption agency, in a, a hub in the NHS. So um, yeah, so I went to the council 
and I spoke to them and at the same time Ellie Williams had come out on, um, on Facebook and uh, we confirmed that this man from Sidra Research Hospital, a project manager with Caritas Care Limited, putting social workers on a caravan site, is the same caravan site that our children, our, our teenage girls, are being trafficked to. So they are using Meadowlands Caravan Site it, near Barrow to traffic the teenage girls and to traffic our babies and children. And the, the, uh, social, the social services counsellor, I looked what, what, uh, who was the social services counsellor, she is on the social services, head of social services counsellor, head of, uh, on the police and crime panel, and on the taxi and private hire liaison group. And when I asked her why she was on the taxi and private li liaison group online, on a list of things she was on, it got took off. When they want to hide something, when you know, you know you're on something when they start hiding something. And they did the same with the minutes. They took the minutes off line when they found out, I found out about Sandik Mahajan. It all goes down. He wasn't only in Cumbria, he was in Scarborough minutes and he was in Blackpool minutes all at the same time. Working for, he had, he had scarborough.co.gov.uk, he had blackpool.gov.uk and he had um, at South Lakes uh, .gov .uk, all at the same time. They were all, they all had the same senior governance officer for the adoption agencies and scrutiny officer, he put his name down as a scrutiny officer first. It's, it's, it is a government initiative to depopulate the working class. This is a war on the working class and I want to show you something. Um, sorry. Um, back in 2012, the, um, the Federation for Social Workers, which incidentally was started in 1936 in Berlin under Hitler, the Federation for Social Workers said that they are going along with the new world order. They feel, they feel obliged, I think that was the word, I've got it in quotes, feel obliged to go along with the, uh, with the New World Order. That is the social workers. The, the government needs social workers to, to uh, initiate their uh, depopulation plan. I'm sorry to be the bearer of bad news, but this is a government initiative. And um, I just wanted to point out a lady to you, Josephine Butler. This little book is called Nonviolent Extremists. That's what we are. We are this this time's nonviolent extremists. And we are fighting a very, very, very corrupt government. And I would put them up there with Nazi Germany. I would put them up there with Hitler. They are, they do with there's too many of us for their new world order. This lady, Josephine Butler, they called her an irresponsible rabble rouser. They called her fowler of the minds of children. Listen what she did. Britain's first anti-prostitution prostitution campaigner and remains one of our greatest social reformers. Instrumental in the campaign to raise the age of consent from 12 to 16 to protect girls from sexual abuse. She helped expose the scandal of children trafficked between Belgium and Britain and the trade in underage virgins on the street of London. This is Julie Bindler's quote. She's my new hero because that's me. I'm, I'm fighting for the children. I'm fighting for the children as much as she was back then. Government has to ask, we have to ask questions of this government.
government and I have been to the council meeting, a full council meeting, they wouldn't let me speak. They wouldn't let me speak at a full council meeting. So I emailed every councillor and I told them what I knew. And I went and stood on my own with my board and they couldn't look me in the face. They knew who I was. And the only one that came to me and spoke to me was Anne Burns, the social, the, the counsellor for children's services. And she just shook her head and said, we're doing all we can, we're doing all we can. I don't know what she meant by that. What is that? I didn't speak. I was on private land. I was in a, I was at the, because uh, they don't want to go to the council offices. They were at uh, Carlisle Racecourse. So I had to be quiet. I was on private land and I just stared at her because she knows and shame on them. We need, we don't need William, we don't need Willy, we Willy Winky telling us what time to go to bed. We need another William Wilberforce yes, to stop them trafficking our children. Thank you.